Hi, this is Mary Lurson, Executive Director of the NAM Foundation, and I'm coming to you from Summer NAM in Nashville, Tennessee on a Friday, and I'm really thrilled that we've found in the midst of our guests here um, that was so gracious to join us here in the podcast, Mandy Harvey. And if that name somehow rings a bell with all of you, she was the remarkable artist, and I use the term artist, music, yeah. musical yeah. artist, yeah. that um, appeared on America's Got Talent season 12, or season, yes, yeah, season 12, with her presentation of her singing with the ukulele, and surprising all of us that she is completely deaf. And yeah. this happened... Uh, I think it brought all of us to a whole new understanding and reality to what's possible for music for someone that has experienced a profound disability um, in their development. So thank you for being with us. Oh, well, thank you. That's so sweet. Oh, and that was always the goal. You know, I went on that show to hopefully give a different perspective and to kind of challenge people's thinking of to see a person and say, okay, well, I have a hearing loss or I have a barrier that's in front of me, and I guess that means I have to stop pursuing my dreams, and that's just not true. If anything, it can give you kind of that motivation and gumption to work even harder. And so my goal for going on that show was to just be another example that you can be different and it's okay. Well, you achieved that goal mightily. Oh, right? well, I mean, thank you. you did. I mean, the world really sat up and took serious notice. So that should make you feel like you took a very important step toward that that direction right. and all the people that you inspired and helped along the way. Well, thank you. That's we still really, have a lot of work to I know. do. I you know, that's like, a team effort. Like, like we all do. I mean, we we care so much about music education and the fact that every child has a chance from to learn music and that's a goal we have that we just have to keep working on and yes. you have a goal that you just have to keep working on exactly right? it's not exactly. once that's not one time right you have right to keep and going we have to back. work together that's right that's Absolutely. right so tell us about your musical beginnings uh, and this was when you were a child or where you were developing when you yeah. had you, you said you were still somewhat hard of hearing but you were hearing the world, right? When yeah. you were growing up, that yeah. your disability, full deafness came later, right? As you, of course, you of know. course. I grew up uh, slightly hard of hearing. So for me, I became a very introverted child. I didn't have friends. I was very awkward. I was painfully shy. And I fell in love with music. It was my way to express myself. And getting involved with choir, I was just fascinating. Every person in the room could experience the song differently and dream of something different, but all the words were in black and white right there, and so I didn't have to guess what was happening around me. I could read it, and I could be a part of a team and kind of forced friendships um, and, and create something beautiful, and I just I became addicted to it, so I got involved with every choir possible and when I was in high school I was in four or five different choirs at the same time in musical theater and I uh, started cleaning toilets so I could pay for voice lessons and it was just really my whole heart my whole world that's wonderful so music was available to you in school you were able to have yeah. musical study and choirs and there were some opportunities along the way Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, part of them you kind of have to create as you go. Oh, sure. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, I, I, was, I was fortunate. I got to go to schools that had choir, and my hearing loss wasn't so um, severe that I, that I couldn't understand. You know, when everybody starts singing at the same time, I couldn't hear myself at all. Mm -hmm. And I always had to be very close to the piano and very close to the teachers talking and other people would help me with notes, but um, I could still hear enough to be a part of, of that world in that way. And obviously, uh, maybe it's, it seems obvious, you can correct me, but along the way, you knew you had a beautiful voice. <laughs> oh, you had a voice that you loved. You loved, you, you had a voice that you 
felt that you wanted to express with, right? Well, you, I love to sing. You, I, I, I love I to sing. I, I wasn't really caring too I, much if other people heard me. My, my true heart was in education. I was petrified of having other people hear me sing. The idea of it made me want to die. You know, I was that kid who had to, like, forcibly had to get up and audition. And I would stand up there, and then the tingles in your hands, and it works its way up, and you just hope that you can get that last note out before you pass out in front of everybody that was me you oh, know no. I, yeah, I think that's what I meant to say was you knew along the way that you loved to sing and you had a voice that would allow uh, you to sing it, oh, right? I, I was gonna anyone, sing I was gonna sing well, the, one way or another but, and, it was gonna happen and worrying about what happened when you people actually heard you is kind of a secondary problem right <laughs> oh right absolutely but absolutely. you knew that you loved to sing Oh, yeah, my shower knew really well, too. It was your deal, right? It was, well, yeah, music yeah. was my world. Yeah. It was everything. And then, you know, I, I was so impacted by my teachers that I really wanted to become a teacher. I had no ambition to be a performer. I thought that performers, you had to have something, like, a little wrong in your head to, to <laughs> force yourself to be in that position again and again and because again. Because of the it fear of the terrifying. stage and having people hear you and judge you. Oh, right, yeah. Right, yeah. The, the judgment and my internal criticism of myself was pretty loud. Mm -hmm. um, but I had this beautiful opportunity when I was in high school. I, uh, I got to be a part of a 500-part choir. Mm -hmm. We flew to Sydney, Australia and sang in the Opera House. Mm -hmm. And it was unbelievable. And you had all of those voices singing at the same time and one person directing it and creating the ebb and flow of something so emotional that I said, that's what I want to do with my life. I want to give these opportunities to other people. I want to, to help and encourage students to find their passion and find their voice. Mm -hmm. and and to make make an impact mm -hmm. and so i went to school for vocal music education and uh it was a, a it was a perfect dream meets reality for about a month and then after a month my hearing started to deteriorate and i wasn't sure what was happening and you go through a period of denial but I've had surgeries and ear infections and perforated eardrums so many times in my life. You just kind of hope it's just a consistent normal problem right, and not right. something bigger. But then it came to a point that it was clear that you had really had lost your hearing. That it, yeah, that, that I, it I mean, it was, it was a very progressive issue. It turns out, we didn't know this at the time, we just saw you know, what was happening. We didn't understand the why. But it turns out I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. It's a connective tissue disorder. And my nerves started to deteriorate. Mm. So that was the big reason why I was losing my hearing. I had a lot happening when I was 18, 19 years old. I had a lot of surgeries, a lot of medications, a lot of hormones, a lot of change, and a lot of stress. And my body does not deal with that well. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of battled itself and parts of it lost hmm. and so I uh, got hearing aids and that was kind of my hope and my goal was to to continue and finish school but even with hearing aids my hearing deteriorated past a point where they really were helpful other than random noises mm -hmm. and chaos mm -hmm. and I was um dropped from a music program at school and my entire identity swallowed into it because I had convinced myself that the only thing that I could do was become a music teacher and I had to hear to be involved with music. I told myself that lie and I was very convincing. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> but it uh, turns out I was, was wrong on, on multiple levels. First, I was wrong that I was only capable of one dream. You're capable of creating dreams every day, all the time, at any moment. Thousands and thousands of potential, you know, just swelling up inside of you. The second was telling myself that I was limited because I had a disability. 
And that's just not true either. I moved back home, started taking ASL classes, got involved with the deaf community, and I found myself in a room where I could fully communicate. I wasn't that introverted person who didn't understand what was happening. The conversation was there, and I was a part of it for the first time in my life. And it really inspired me to start saying yes to things. Hmm. And finding my way back into music, it, it was such a beautiful journey. It was scary and weird. I was, I was, I was going to say, you were very brave. <laughs> I mean, I, as a college freshman, to be on a path to training and a career in music, which is really rigorous and serious, yeah. and then to um, sort of have that ambition just sort of pulled away because of a, of a reality of a disability, but then to go, no, I'm not, I'm not stopping here. Well, I did not, stop for a little bit. There was yes, a solid you know parking what? that it, happened. You know what? And I'm kind of glad that was true because you you just can't. You you got to go forward with strength and a little bit of insight. But then you took some very brave steps forward. I mean, it's yeah. really brave. Well, you only right? have two options. <laughs> you know, after I I had my time. I had a really a good chunk of time to to mourn and to allow myself to to grieve the loss, the death of my old life. Because that's what it felt like. It felt like I'm a, I'm a different person now. I have to start new. Mm -hmm. But you had two choices. One, you can allow yourself to stay there in that dark place every day, again and again and again and again and again. You know what tomorrow's going to look like. And the next day and the next day. And where does it go? nowhere or you can make the really difficult decision the painful decision to start clawing your way out to the potential of a better tomorrow so recognizing that and thanking you for doing that and being an inspiration for others mm -hmm. but I really would love to know more about how mm -hmm. you as a deaf person who had a beautiful passion love to sing how then you were able to retrain the body as an instrument to yeah. be a singer without being able to hear i mean this well, is at first it was more pushing you know other is, people pushed me and it, it seems a lot which is crazier great, than it is which is really great oh, that <laughs> other people pushed you absolutely you know? i mean i gave up on myself a long time ago yeah. it took Let's remember a, a, you know a team a network of people to say, you know what, you're gonna, you're gonna you're, try. Right, you're gonna try. Yeah. Right. We're not giving up <laughs> until you try. Right? It, yeah, exactly. And then once you fail, you're gonna try again. You know, there was so much encouragement, so much love, and sometimes tough love. Um, but it started with playing guitar with my dad. That's something that I have done a long time growing up, and my parents both were trying to figure out how to just get me communicating with them again. And that was the way that I communicated with my dad. So I'm sure it was probably my mom's suggestion at first. Um, but my dad and I sat down in the basement and pulled up and I was watching the chords. So it was Started visual. To feel it. It was a visual Visual, yeah, yeah. So I'm watching the chords. I know how right. to make the chords, you know. I can't hear, but I can see my fingers and they, they know their way. And so feeling the rhythm and then paying attention for the first time, how much the instrument vibrates on your chest, down your arm, on your fingertips, and experiencing music in a different way was really in encouraging to me. I was like, oh, as a music nerd, you're just like, it's oh, only, it this only, is an avenue I haven't focused on yet. Right, and you think, it's, you think all that time it's only going in one way. And really, all right. that time, it's going in all those places. Right? Well, and in fact, all of these places first. Right. You know, the, the sound right. waves don't stop just because I can't absorb them in mm -hmm. one part of my body. Your body is made up of water, 80-something percent. And so all of that sound is hitting you from all these different angles all over the place and traveling up and down. You know, the reason why you hear is because a wave hit the eardrum 
went in. Mm -hmm. So it's hitting me. It's just not hitting that specific piece, but it's hitting here and here and here and here and here and here. So your body became the, the microphone. The, the body became the eardrum. Yeah. You just, right. I started absorbing differently. And so I was encouraged, okay, well, well you're playing guitar. Why not try to learn a song and sing it? Which seemed crazy, but uh, you could sing I it in your head, yes. though, right? You were singing it in oh, your head. Oh yeah, but you, you don't hear, know if you're right. You but know, but you could hear your voice singing in your head, right? Yeah, my the memory of who I was before, you know, in there at this point, it's kind of blurry. It's been a while, but it's still me when I was 18 years old. Hopefully, I've grown since then, but. Um, but yeah, I still have that person in there. I still have that sound in there, mm -hmm. a memory of. It's mm -hmm. more of a ghost. But what I did is I didn't try to hyper-focus on the fake voices in my head. I wanted to be able to feel and to see what I was actually doing. And so I got the sheet music up, put it on the piano, and I used a visual tuner that shows what you're singing and then marked it off on my throat note by note back and forth making sure that that little light was green and correct for each note through the song is the visual tuner just like is it um sharp or flat it was it just that oh, simple old-fashioned visual show, tuner yeah it shows yeah. everything if you hand me my phone I'll, I'll show you one but basically you know you go in and you can hum and it shows you different I mean I know notes. a visual tuner I just it's just it's just that's available to any musician right a visual oh, it's free yeah. yeah they've got a bunch of oh, them oh yeah that that visual Ooh. tuner oh sure so you use this as a as a tool as to, a pool yeah it's that, part yeah. part of part of the process so then there was some sensation that was going on internally that you were matching to the pitch that you saw there yeah, well, right. I mean, there, there you're was... making a sound, and then you're watching it, and then you adjust visually. Then once you lock onto a note, you and know, you just... it's just doing scales to get to your next ones and using the muscle memory that I've had yeah. by using my natural, I you know, near-perfect pitch, mm -hmm. so that doesn't hurt. Right. Um, but using that with the trust of seeing it and then getting used to feeling it and how it travels up and down okay. specific notes rumble in your chest other notes buzz in your nasal cavity getting used to that feeling right and relearning and, it and really. really working hard on on trusting yourself it's like when you sing happy birthday the second note you know the, the when you start singing it as part of a group you're not thinking oh, I wonder if that note is this note, and you're not listening to it. You know, your your body just naturally goes there. If you know that song, and you've sung it a thousand different times and in different ways, you know, they start the note, and you just start singing Happy Birthday. It's ingrained into you. And so how can I force that ingrained trust of myself based off of touch and using tuners? And so it's creating that system and working really hard to trust it. That was the hardest part is is trusting myself and and working over and over, picking a note and then testing myself all day long. Oh, oh, he had still D flat. Oh, he had still D flat. It's almost like uh, um, you were learning the sensations of singing without hearing it. Oh, yeah. And, and it's trust. very strong. And I mean, were... everybody can. Oh, yeah. If you, you were... put this yeah. on here, you get used to where where you naturally talk what level it is and then as you go lower and higher you can feel everything move and as as the note travels you can actually feel the buzzing the vibration of it go up and down in your throat so you can almost get to a point where it's like you're playing your own throat mm -hmm. as a piano mm -hmm. and um but I started talking into balloons and mm -hmm. having other people talk into the balloons as well so I could get a gauge on dynamics for how loud I need to talk, how loud I need to project, and paying attention to people. You know, if they're like, I was like, oh, maybe I need to talk a little louder, you know, yeah. or if they're like, So you, you had know? to develop a whole new set of sensitivities on so many levels. 
Yeah, but the whole, there's no. part of it is a natural progression when you lose a sense and you rely on other ones to to navigate life, you know, when you're home alone in your house and you can't hear if somebody's sneaking in or walking up behind you, you start really paying attention naturally to what you have, you know, if uh, you feel the footsteps on the floor behind you, you start paying attention to those things to, to kind of compensate for what's lacking, mm -hmm. lacking, lacking. You know, uh, in our podcast conversations these last couple of days, we've talked to so many musicians, and you are saying the same thing that they're saying. You need, with your retraining, you just really had to be dedicated. Yeah. To the time that it took. We talk about 10,000 hours, you know? The yeah. 20,000 hours. Oh my gosh, 30, I don't even want to know. I right? don't want to know. I but, don't want to add them up. Like, but, but it's insane. But, and, but it allowed you to, to find this expression again, right? You exactly. Found, you found the expression to well, be a musician. But it, it, it's, it's, a, it's even, a, I'd say, a little bit better than that because, you know, I'm finding a different way to experience music. Yes, the, the, the fact that I'm a musician didn't change just because I couldn't hear. It, who I am is a musician. I'm a singer. I, I songwrite. That's who I am. I just happen to be deaf. I'm not a deaf singer, you know. But not being able to hear myself remove that voice of criticism. So now when I sing, I sing so much more freely than I ever have before because I can't tell myself it wasn't good enough. I can't judge myself in comparison to the person next to me. I don't have to worry about them influencing my sound. It's just me. I get to be myself, 100% myself, without getting in my own way. And I, I feel like the whole experience has caused me to be, become a better person, but a better musician as well. I appreciate music more than I ever had in my life, and I'm more motivated to work even harder than I ever had before mm. in my life. You've said such powerful things here for every person who cares about music and wants to make music. It's not about the self-criticism or criticism from, one, from someone else, but truly to find your own voice. Yeah. And you truly have. What's next for you before we hear you sing and play a little bit for us? What's oh my next? gosh. What's next for you? What, what are you planning? I have so many things happening yeah. right now. It's really exciting. Um, I'm creating my fourth album, and it's all original music, so that's going to come out You've soon. You've done three already? Three, three yeah, they're three. jazz albums. The The last one that I did has some original work, but this one will be all mm. p putting it all out on the table. I um, am working with Kala Ukuleles, and we've created a learn to play line for Try, the song that I auditioned with on AGT that went a little, a little crazy. A little crazy. Yeah, I think it's right. been seen like good, 500 million times. In a good way, a little crazy. <laughs> yeah, but in a really positive, encouraging way, which was, which was the hope. Mm -hmm. And so um, creating a ukulele will be with them. I've been fortunate that I get to donate a lot of instruments, and I, I'm working with a nonprofit organization called No Barriers, so that helps people with and without disabilities overcome their obstacles. And I just got back from Nepal and worked with uh, kids, students, who all have different abilities and disabilities. And we worked together as a team, and we visited a deaf school. So the future is busy. Busy. <laughs> you know, busy. I'm working hard. You know, I have no idea what tomorrow's going to look like with my with my body, with my condition, I could lose my vision, who knows? I'm just trying to make the most of what's here, mm -hmm. what's happening now, and to have a life of, you know, purpose and hopefully encouragement. Purpose. And I must acknowledge that there's some really important he people here in the room that must have been so supportive of you. Your mom yeah. is, si is signing just off camera to help us communicate. Your dad is here with a yeah. wonderful, 
um, a doggy, Annie, is that her name? Yeah, my service dog, the service Annie. Dog She's the Annie, sweetest. Who yeah. helps with your hearing, your hearing dog, right? So it's, I have yeah. to commend your parents for their obviously loving support yeah. and their help for you. Oh, I, I, yes. I guarantee you I would not be here and probably would not have come back to music without right. their constant pushing right. and, and love, even and I, through the difficult, like... Ooh, depressing, angry, Andy Ming, you know. Right. It, I wasn't quite myself then. <laughs> it was hard. And um, so we thank you, parents, just to say yeah. thank you. And to, uh, we can't get you on camera here, but know that they're here. They and, look similar to this and, if and, you mush <laughs> them together. <laughs> and what uh, powerful, what love can do when, it's, when it needs to come, come and support someone through the difficult times. Yeah, and there's exactly. nothing like a puppy dog in your life either, right? <laughs> Little Annie oh over my there. Gosh, she's the she looks best. very comfortable. We couldn't get her on camera either. So, uh, maybe after I'll, I'll sing a little bit of my song, we'll pop over. her up, you so, know, be right. like, and this was Annie right. and then just take off. Right. So, what are you going to sing for us? Tell us. Oh, would it be okay to play a little bit of try? Absolutely. Oh, fantastic. Absolutely. Fantastic. It's got, I've got it written right there this is on the, my ukulele. Yeah. The song you wrote? It is a song I wrote. I, I wrote this song from an encouragement of a friend of mine named Eric Weinmeier. Um, he climbed Mount Everest and he's blind. He's done the seven summits and kayaked the Grand Canyon. And he's like, you're holding yourself back. Why are you not expressing yourself? I said, it's because I'm afraid. And he said, what's the worst that can happen? And he was right. I'm, I, I have figured out more times than not, I'm the reason why I'm not successful, because I hold myself back or I tell myself I'm not good enough. And so this is a, a song of my journey. Yeah. <laughs> more than it is blue but I know one day I'll get through and I'll take my place again if I would try if I would try Mandy Harvey, Talking at Music Education, an episode we will never forget. Oh, thank thank you. you. Thank you for all of the hard work that you do thank to you so encourage much. something so important. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm a little emotional. It was really, <laughs> really wonderful. Thank you for being part of this very special episode of Talking at Music Education, a podcast of the NAMM Foundation.